This is going to be a video about my relationship, um, my open relationship, how we got there, and the whys and all the details. Because I've gotten asked this question by quite a few people who are just curious to know um, what our deal is. So I'm going to lay it all out. Uh, I, I've got my little um, lace teddy on because I'm like, oh, I'm going to wear something sexy to make a video, but I'm also cold. So I have a sweater. <laughs> um, but uh, enough about that. Let's talk about the relationship. So when it comes to being in an open relationship, I would say that it was an evolution that happened pretty naturally, and it is still evolving. Um, there, there's definitely not a, a solid end point where we're like, this is where we've arrived and this is where we will always be. Um, I think that people are always evolving in relationships and it's really important if you're going to stay together long term with somebody to be checking in to see if they feel differently about the rules of engagement in your relationship, if they feel differently about their needs, their desires, all of those things, because the person that you, you know, may have married 15 years ago is certainly not going to be the exact same person uh, that they are, to, you know, today. Uh, and so I think evolution is a really important part of a relationship. It also keeps it interesting and makes sure that it's exciting, even after many years. Right. So I, I think it's a wonderful thing, not a scary, bad thing. Um, so about our relationship. So, again, it was a natural evolution. We were both out of long term relationships and we didn't say, hey, I want to try an open relationship. It really started with just general conversations we would have about what we didn't want. That's where it really started, what we didn't want. Neither one of us wanted to be in a relationship that was highly restrictive or jealous. Um, and that meant to both of us at the time that, you know, we both have friends of, um, you know, different genders, the same gender, and we wanted to be able to have those friendships and relationships. And, and we both agreed on that. Uh, we also, both agreed that we didn't think jealousy was a um, was a positive part of a relationship. Um, some people are uh, naturally there's a there's a spectrum of jealousy. Some people are naturally not very jealous at all. That's fewer people. And then there are some people who are extremely jealous, regardless of if the situation warrants it. They are naturally much more jealous. And then there's people that go in between and many people shift where they are on the spectrum, depending on the stability and the comfort of their current relationship. Um, and so both of us were talking about jealousy. It didn't seem like either one of us was a particularly jealous person naturally, and we didn't really want that in our relationship. Some people mistake jealousy for passion. They think if you're not jealous, it means you're not passionate about them. And um, I, do not feel that way. And he did not feel that way. We both were very opposite of that. And then we both also started talking about this idea of like marrying your best friend. People say all the time, you know, I married my best friend. It's in like every set of every other set of vows, marriage vows is, you know, I'm marrying my best friend, you're my best friend. But are you? <laughs> are you best friends? Are are you? Because many, many long-term relationships, um, they people within it, they actually don't trust their partner to talk about a lot of things, right? I can't talk to my husband or my wife about this because they would be mad at me or jealous, threatened, whatever it is. So they have their friends that they talk to about half of the stuff that's going on in their mind and then their partner, right? So for many people, they just don't feel safe to truly communicate with their life partner that they say is their best friend. And so both of us talked a lot about this idea. <clears throat> and as best we could, we really wanted to be in a relationship where we really were best friends, really, truly best friends. And, you know, that sort of meant, that sort of meant like, 
you know, for example, um, we both kind of agreed early on that of course you're going to find, we're going to find other people attractive. I think that it's very normal and natural for us to look around and find people attractive, not just celebrities, but real people. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, and he was like, yes, of course, that's natural. And so if I was out with my best girlfriend and I saw somebody I thought was hot, I'd feel very comfortable telling them that I thought that guy was hot. And we would laugh about it and we'd be like, oh yeah. And then that would be it, right? But there's a safety zone there. We feel perfectly comfortable. There's no issue. Um, and I wanted to be able to ha extend that to my romantic, my primary romantic relationship, you know? And he felt the same way. And I actually feel that it brings us together and it builds trust because we actually do feel comfortable. I mean, the two of us all the time, you, one of our little games when we're traveling is uh, we're both, we both really, really like to get early boarding groups. <laughs> so, uh, just because we are, you know, we like to plan our trips. So when we get on a plane, we're usually pretty early. We sit in our seats and then we will play a game where as people are coming down the aisles, each of us has to pick one person that we'd sleep with. And we, and then sometimes we like to guess who the other person would pick and we just have a good time, right? As people are coming down, we're whispering. I'm like, ooh, ooh, you know, someone's got, oh, he's hot. Maybe him, I don't know, I'm gonna save him in case there's nobody better. And we talk about this very openly and it really does bring us closer and it does make us feel like actual friends you know <laughs> and uh so that was really how it started it was just it was less about being sexually open with other people and much more about being open with each other that's really what it was about for us and then having sex or exploring sexually has has really been secondary to just the dynamic of the two of us being trusting and open, right? And um, when it comes to exploring sexually, that kind of unfolded over time. Um, you know, at some point we talked about things we hadn't done or wanted to try and trying threesomes and you know, getting on a dating app and, you know, looking for a unicorn or something. I think that's often a gateway <laughs> for a lot of uh, relationships. A unicorn would be a third who, you know, you're both kind of dating or seeing within a relationship, right? So that third person. And um, not a trio, not a three-person polyamorous relationship, usually a sexual partner. Um, who is solo, you know, a girl who's gonna, you're just gonna have threesomes with, that would be your unicorn. So we did some unicorn hunting as people call it. Um, and we just started to kind of talk about these things. I remember our first threesome, um, we had a girl, we were gonna have a girl involved with us and she was gonna come over. We had a date with her. We'd been out with her. We liked her. We invited her to come over on another date to our house. And we were like, okay, you know, threesome time. And I remember thinking to myself, well, I mean, I don't feel jealous now at all. I don't think I'm gonna be jealous, but I suppose that could change in the moment. And I said that to um, to Mark. I said, well, you know, um, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be jealous, but I, I might not like this experience. And so no promises, of course, um, but I do promise, the only promise I am making is that I promise not to um, hold a grudge against you if I am jealous, because we decided to do this together. And he did the same, he said the same, and he has said the same about every experience we've had and, and vice versa. Anyway, and I remember thinking, well, okay, I'll, I'll know in the moment, I'll, I'll assess in the moment how I'm feeling. And I didn't even think to ask myself if I was jealous until like after it was over. Like the next day, I was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to ask myself. I was supposed to assess how I was feeling. Guess I wasn't jealous because it literally didn't cross my mind. <laughs> Not once was I like, am I bothered by seeing this? Didn't even dawn on me in the moment to think about it. So I was like, well, I didn't feel jealous. And um, I will say that um, I have discovered 
within this relationship at least, that I am not a particularly jealous person by nature. Not at all. I think I'm very low on the spectrum, naturally. And i it's not just in this relationship. After I started, you know, we started talking to more people, guys, girls, dating apps, and, you know, we started sharing these things together. I really had to do some assessing. I'm like, what, you know, because this was a new part of my life. I had not been in an open relationship before. And I was, you know, doing some thinking. And, and I really realized, like, when I look back at all of my relationships that I've ever had since high school, I can't actually remember a single time that I was jealous at all at a party over a guy. I, I, I've been envious. I remember times where there were, I remember in college, there was a guy that I was just like so into. And then um, he liked some other girl, but I didn't extend. And when I was looking, I was like, I didn't extend any negative feelings towards her at all. I just was into him and wished he was into me. And I was envious of her. But I didn't feel like jet, like what does she have that I don't have? Blah, 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 blah. I didn't feel any of that. And when I look back at all of my relationships, I can't remember ever feeling that. Which I, you know, it is what it is. I suppose there could be a time that something could happen that would make me feel jealous, of course. But I do feel that I am very low on the jealousy spectrum naturally. I can say that with confidence. And I understand that's kind of gives me a privilege in this in this world of relationships. I have the privilege of not having to fight jealousy very often, right? For many people to enter in a in an open relationship, jealousy is the number one concern and it is something that you know, you have to learn to feel jealousy and then you have to learn to let yourself feel it without reacting and then really step back from the situation and say, is this reasonable? Am I being fair? Would I want to be treated that way? And you have to give yourself some space to let that feeling filter through before you decide to act, right? Like you really have to learn to deal with it in a healthy way and accept that jealousy is okay. Jealousy doesn't mean that it's bad or wrong necessarily. Jealousy is just an ingrained feeling that we're often ingrained culturally to feel and we should be able to learn to process it and assess logically and, and that sort of thing. I am lucky in that I think I do a lot of that processing very naturally. And, um, and so that part has been easy. I will say, Mark is also pretty low on the jealousy scale. Um, I think that he doesn't really feel jealous as much as sometimes every once in a while he's maybe felt worried, worried, I think. Not so much jealous, but that feeling of anxiety that maybe, you know, that is hard to put your finger on. Um, to go, I, this is a long video, but maybe there's some value here for you. Um, so we have sexually explored together. Um, we've also done things like, you know, my birthday <laughs> gangbang. There's a whole other video on that if you want to hear about that. Um, we've done things like uh, I invited, a, I found a guy, invited him over and um, had sex with him in front of Mark Um and he loved that. I mean, he loved it. <laughs> loved it. And so we've explored a lot of those things. And in the last year or so, um, I, we've sort of done a little bit of solo exploring. But I will say, you know, he has dated a little bit, you know, outside of our relationship. And I've had no problem with that it's fine. It's fun. It's cool. It's, I don't know. I'm like, great, go have fun. You know, he got married really young and was married for 20 years. And when you do that, many of you might, might understand this idea. When you do that, you really miss out on dating. You miss out on 
making dumb decisions or picking up on girls or and getting rejected or whatever. You miss out on that whole part of your life. You just become an adult very quickly. And so I was like, go out, have fun. Let's great. And, um, but he's not like uh, super driven to do it either. Um, it's just kind of open if it happens. I have dabbled, but I am not super driven to explore too much out of my relationship. And I'm not afraid to uh, at all. I just, I have very little free time. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of kids, we have a lot of responsibilities, full time work, just a lot going on. And I love my alone time. It's very important to me. It's very high on my priority list and I don't get enough of it. So I do prioritize it more than um, dating or even exploring particularly outside of the relationship, just sexually or anything. Um, that also can change depending on what's going on in my life. Currently, my interest level is very low. I just, it's like, I just, there's other things on my priority list. Um, and so sometimes it's higher on one partner's list than it is on another partner's list. A lot of people think that there has to be absolute equality of rules. And there does not have to be equality of rules. There can be if that is how you want to form your relationship where, you know, you, you both play by the same exact set of rules and boundaries and guidelines. Um, I don't... Uh, want that because um, two different people might want different things out of an open relationship, right? Because you're two individuals and you're just trying to, it's like you're making, it's a treaty. <laughs> you're making an agreement, right? You're signing a treaty. Here are the terms. And um, for me, I want Mark to be able to, to be Mark, right? Because he was a person, a whole person, before he met me. Meeting me and being in a relationship with me doesn't make him not an individual anymore, right? That doesn't just change. Two do not become one. <laughs> I absolutely detest that saying um, because it's not true. Two are two who are choosing to live life together. Um, that's it, right? And so, um, I might not be in a place where I'm feeling particularly interested and he may be feeling interested. So it's like you go out and do that. And sometimes it's hard for that person. They feel um, guilty often. Sometimes he's had to have time periods where he feels guilty if he's out there exploring and I'm not exploring. He wants me. He's like, you, do, can I find you a date? <laughs> Let me find you a guy. He's like the opposite. He feels guilty if he's out there. And I'm like, no, like I'm going to stay in and watch a murder documentary and I'm so much happier than if I was on a date with a guy. <laughs> so just know we're both getting this a lot out of this experience. Um, you know, so he goes out and he does his thing and um, I'm doing my thing. It just might not necessarily be open and the opposite. You know, there, um, I may go out with somebody and he's in a dry spell where maybe he hasn't met anyone and or it's rough out there and he's not feeling great about himself or whatever it is. And I might be feeling a little bit frisky and I might go out and we're at two different levels. The challenge, of course, is to communicate, to care about each other, to be patient with each other's struggles. And uh, we've done that. We have had uh, times where things felt harder. Um, there have been times where he felt anxiety when I went out with someone. I don't go out very often at all. So I think, you know, there was a time that he felt a lot of anxiety, but he's really, really hard on himself and doesn't like feeling that anxiety. He doesn't like feeling like, He's anything less than 100% awesome all the time, which of course is impossible, but that's what he tries for. So he really tries to get back on the horse. Like, I want you to go out again so I can feel, learn to deal with this feeling, right? So we have had some challenges, 
but we're a very um, solid couple and we do communicate well. Everyone says communication, communication, but it's not just about talking about everything all the time. It's also about um, being willing to listen, being willing to hear things that are, that are different from the way you feel, you know, and you, you can both see the same situation differently. It's about patience and it's also about holding yourself accountable. I think accountability is huge, right? I hear time after time, I've heard people say things like, you know, we had a threesome or we went out with this girl that we decided and then he or she got really upset, <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, and then you're fighting. Well, why are you fighting? You can get upset or feel jealous in the moment, be surprised by feeling, but that is no excuse for resenting your partner when you both went in this together, right? That's about personal accountability. Um, some people say, you know, here's the thing. We, you just wanna do what, what feels right and feels good, but that within reason, uh, meaning this. So it can be challenging. The question is, is the challenge worth it? What's the risk reward, right? And for some people that might be, it might be challenging, but the reward is absolutely worth it. And for other people, it's like, this is stressful. I don't want to do this. It doesn't feel good, right? The problem is when you have two people that want different things and it feels great for one person and feels terrible for another person. Um, that can be a challenge and that's when you have to really be able to be accountable and say, are we willing to have two different sets of criteria for our relationship? Are we allowed to have one person that's open and one per or one person that's non-monogamous and another person that's monogamous? I think that's absolutely okay. Um, it just depends on how each of you feel. Now, you may not feel that that dynamic is okay for your relationship. And that's when you have to say, well, is the person who's non-monogamous willing to be monogamous and stay in that relationship? Or if they're not, then unfortunately that relationship might not be right for you. It's about what's most important to you. Um, there's more studies coming out about non-monogamy, but it's a relatively new thing for science to study. So this is all, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot more research that needs to be done and is being done um, and is unfolding. We're learning more and more scientifically about this. Um, but many uh, in the sex therapy field feel that monogamy is also on a spectrum, a personal spectrum, that people as individuals are on a spectrum from naturally non-monogamous very non-monogamous to naturally monogamous, or I'm sorry, a spectrum from monogamous to non-monogamous and where you naturally feel is sort of inherently who you are, that we're on a spectrum, just like being uh, heterosexual, very heterosexual, very homosexual, and being somewhere in between. And that can change over time in different relationships or as you grow. Same thing with there's a monogamy spectrum. And some people are very much here, on the, they're very monogamous, and some people are naturally non-monogamous. When they realize that non-monogamy is, is an option, they feel validated as people. They're like, this is who I am, I realize. And now I don't feel guilty and shame about it. I feel like I finally know who I am and I get it now. It, it feels right now that I realize that this is something that people are. And then there's people in the middle. I think I am naturally probably more towards non-monogamous in terms of how I feel as a person because I am a not very jealous person by nature because I can I feel comfortable having deep connected relationships and friendships with people. I, I feel... Um, that that is something that I do easily and well. I think I could be polyamorous very easily, and just in terms of myself. But 
being sexually non-monogamous, just going out and having sexual experiences outside of my relationship, isn't that interesting for me. Every once in a while, maybe, but I, I don't find it that interesting. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So I'm, I feel almost more polyamorous than non-monogamous, if that makes sense. I don't know. I like to do things with my partner sexually, and I'm also more into connection. So um, polyamory makes more sense to me because of the included friendship and romantic connection included with that, right? Having multiple more connected, serious partnerships would be much easier for me um, and more attractive to me than having random sexual experiences um, because I honestly, most times, if you were like, do you want to go out on this date with this random guy and then like have sex with him? It's like, no. <laughs> like there are so many other things I'd rather do than deal with that. Going on dates, I don't really love random hookups. I don't love unconnected sex. I, d I did that. I did that in my 20s. Oh my God. I partied, you know, I hooked up. I tried. I did all the things. I've done it. It's not that exciting for me. It's wonderful if it's exciting for you. Oh my God. But I just, it just does not do it for me. It sounds exhausting for me at this point in my life, right? So, um, so I'd rather do things with my partner and do get weird together. That's more interesting to me. And the reward is worth the, the effort and, and you know all that sort of thing. And then polyamory, while I feel like I am probably naturally a polyamorous person, I also just feel like too busy to get there. Like I don't wanna date <laughs> um, right now. So I have so much else going on. And there's other things I'd rather do. And so that's just, I'm not also particularly driven to make that a part of my life right now. Although I do think it would naturally be pretty easy for me. I Very easy for me. I just am not that driven. Right now my life is very full. <laughs> and if you were to ask me, would I rather go out and find a second partner another deep, romantic, fulfilling relationship that I can have that makes my life better or like um, like go shopping at a cool thrift store by myself and get like a like an iced tea and like a chocolate croissant and like a cool coffee shop and just like have an afternoon alone. I'm for sure gonna go thrifting and coffee shop <laughs> rather than go out on a Bumble date. Like, no question. Um, there are other times in my life when I'd be like, oh, fun, I wanna go out on the dates, you know? So again, shifts and changes over time. Six months from now, if we ask this question again, you know, Katie, what's happening in your relationship? What's going on now? I could be like, oh man, I'm just going out and I'm having random sex every week and it's just so fun. It could be very different, <laughs> but right now that's what it is. And so this was very long. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope I've answered your question. Um, there is no right or wrong way to form a relationship and to form the boundaries of a relationship. There is no rule. Um, you have to create it within your relationship to what feels right while respecting each other. Sometimes there's compromising. The point is you have to both talk very openly about what you're interested in, why you're interested in it, what do you think you're gonna get out of this arrangement, agree to things, be accountable to those agreements, and if things change, if your feelings change, your desires change, or your needs change, you have to talk about it. And then you have to be a good listener. And sometimes you have to hear things that are hard, right? And you have to go, and if you have to leave the room and take some breaths, do it. Be a good listener. But these are the same qualities that are required in a monogamous relationship. Like people are always like, oh my God, an open relationship. Like there's no way you'll, you'll eventually break up. I'm like, oh, 50% of marriages break up. <laughs> I mean, and how many of the 50% that are remaining want to divorce, but like don't because of the pressure or the money or the kids or whatever, right? 
marriage, monogamous marriage ain't doing so great either. <laughs> so um, I certainly do not think that one is doomed and the other is not. Um, I think they're probably both equally doomed and you just do your very best to put yourself into the relationship, be accountable, be a good listener, talk openly about change, be willing to listen, be willing to let that other person, your partner, be their own person and want the best for them, want them to grow and change and try things and be scared and you'll feel good and you want that for yourself in the relationship and you have to keep moving. The good benefit of this kind of communication, whether non-monogamous or monogamous, the benefit of both agreeing that change is not it's not scary, it's an opportunity, and change is also a fact of life. It also means you can continue to feel erotically interested in a person, the same person, over many, many years. It also allows um, you to be interested and excited and feel newness from a person that you've been with many years. But if you keep that person as the person you married 15 years ago, and you just assume that everything is the same, they're the same person, that's, that's a one-way ticket to falling out of love, falling out of eroticism, um, falling out of interest or even liking them <laughs> as people because you stop being curious, right? And so please, be curious in your relationships. Remember that that person is a whole other person that exists, whether or not you exist, right? Two do not become one. Two become two that choose each other. And I think that is much more romantic. And uh, so there you go. There's my 30 minute TED talk for you today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please, of course, if you have any other questions, you know I'm an open book. And I love to talk about these things. This was less of a, um, I, I hope you found some value. This was less about me teaching you something and more about just opening up um, who I am and, and details about my life because I, I want you guys to feel, you know, I'm trying to be a real person here on this platform. And, and um, so, and hopefully you can learn from that. And uh, you've seen me grow and change over time. Uh, on this platform and I will continue to do so and I hope you will continue to be interested in you know in that change who I am in the moment not who I was necessarily a year ago and uh, it's just the same idea in your relationships I also enjoy the growth and change of my friendships with all of you guys because um, that has grown and changed um, my outlook on this platform when I started is very different from what it is now, you know, and that's because of the relationships really and the friendships. Uh, so thank you for that. And, um, be sure to check out, I, I always appreciate you guys' support. Be, be sure to check out, you know, my photo and video sets. I always try to keep them creative and interesting and sexy. Um, your likes, help and, and mean the world, your tips mean the world. They help me keep doing this and keep trying to create interesting content for you guys and hopefully make your lives and your relationships a little bit better. 